Walker used his money to reportedly pay some skank for an abortion. So I don't care if Herschel Walker paid to abort endangered baby eagles. I want control of the Senate. Well, Dana Lausch, I mean, just gave away the whole game. Real transparent there, real candid. Because fact of the matter is, and I've said this a billion times on the show, the right wing never has and never will care about abortion. They will exploit the issue of reproductive rights and abortion to accumulate power. And that's what Loesch was saying right then and there. I don't care if Herschel Walker, a Republican Senate candidate in Georgia, paid for a former girlfriend to get an abortion after he impregnated her. I don't care about that. I care about power. I care about him winning. I care about a Republican sitting in that seat. That's what matters. We just use the anti-abortion narrative to accumulate power, that's it. And by the way, Herschel Walker himself has certainly engaged in those talking points. He's one of the most extreme in terms of wanting to ban abortions in any and all cases, even if the mother's life is at risk as a result of that pregnancy. It's very uh, House of the Dragon, <laughs> to be honest with you. Anyway, now uh, she wanted to further clarify her point by saying, quote, one guy who reportedly paid for a girlfriend's abortion compared to one guy who wants to pay for everyone's abortions. So her argument is, well, Herschel Walker's the lesser of two evils because Raphael Warnock, the Democratic incumbent he's running against, wants us to pay for everyone's abortions, except that's not true. And we literally have laws that prevent the use of taxpayer money on abortions. It's called the Hyde Amendment. She knows that, she knows that. Dana Lowe should just say what she really means. I mean, as a spokesperson for the NRA for a long time, I think it's abundantly clear that people like Dana Loesch doesn't care at all, at all about the lives of children, literal living, breathing children who get shot up in school campuses across this country. The idea that she cares about zygotes and fetuses is laughable to say the least, but she cares about power. She cares about Republican control and that's what this is about. Now, let's not be too hard on her because she's just one example of the diseased thinking that we see in the Republican Party. In fact, after news broke of Herschel's scandal, he was actually rewarded by Republican donors and voters because he raised quite a bit of money. Let's go to this tweet. Walker campaign manager Scott Paradise told staff this morning, the Daily Beast story was a setback, but that fundraising was surging after Walker's denial. In fact, Paradise mentioned the Access Hollywood episode saying, Trump still made it to the White House per person familiar. Of course, Trump made it to the White House because it ain't about the family values messaging that they purport to believe in. It ain't about the anti-abortion messaging that they purport to believe in. They don't believe in any of that. It's all about power. The hypocrisy has always been there. It's always slapped us in the face over and over again. And for some reason, some portion of Republican voters still believe that Republicans represent the party of family values. And again, it's about exploiting those issues for power. So I wanna give you some Previous examples, one of my favorite examples, I know I've mentioned him on the show a lot. Scott Desjardins, who happens to still be a member of Congress. He is a Republican congressman from the state of Tennessee, it's, it's fourth congressional district. He uh, turns out was caught up in an abortion related scandal himself back in 2014. According to testimony during his divorce trial, the Tennessee congressman supported his ex-wife's decision to get abortions, two abortions, Two abortions, not one, but two before their marriage. The former doctor also allegedly pressured a 24 year old patient he was having an affair with to also get an abortion. Even after all that information came out, Desjardins still had the gall to vote for anti abortion bills and boast of having a 100% pro life voting record. Yes, because don't you know, guys? They like to latch on to those culture war issues knowing full well that if they succeed in getting legislation passed in regard to those issues, the only people who really end up suffering is everyone else. They've, they've got all the resources necessary to get to where they need to go to get the legal abortion. 
For all the other women out there, anyone else who doesn't have the resources, anyone else who might be desperate, if you gotta resort to the coat hanger, sorry. I mean, Dejarlet needs political power. Herschel Walker needs political power. Dana Loesch is very concerned that they might lose that Senate seat. They can't do that. They gotta make sure they earn that Senate seat by lying to the American people about how good and moral they are. While simultaneously engaging in all sorts of questionable activity and behavior behind the scenes. You know, it's amazing because socially, I'm obviously pretty left, pretty far left, okay? I have a live and let live kind of mentality. But uh, I don't know, man, I look at my life and I look at my marriage and it is so wholesome compared to some of the garbage you see among Republican politicians and candidates. I mean, insanely wholesome compared to what Dijarlet was up to, banging 24 year old patients and then forcing them to have abortions, really? And then he goes around moralizing about reproductive rights. By the way, quick video that CNN put together at the time of Dijarlet's behavior. We really appreciate this big win. It was, you know, it's nice to have a great margin of victory. Congressman Scott Desjardins is the pro-life Republican and doctor who slept with multiple patients, got one pregnant, demanded she and his expecting wife get abortions. Is that family values? He got reelected. Herschel Walker makes fifty thousand dollars in fundraising on the night the Daily Beast story broke. It was a surge in donations. Desjardins gets reelected, he's still a congressman. He's cheating on his wife left and right, testified that he uh, you know, urged both women, his, his ex-wife and the 24, 24 year old he got pregnant, urged them to get abortions. It's amazing, it really is. And by the way, we're now learning just how little the Republican establishment really cares about abortion. Because it turns out that Herschel Walker's campaign knew, knew, knew about it months before it even came out through the Daily Beast report. So this was reported in Politico and I thought it was fascinating. So there's a Republican strategist who's involved, who's involved with the campaign said this. It's not that we knew about this specific case, but he's a wealthy famous football player who is obviously spreading his seed, said the strategist, granted anonymity to discuss internal party discussions. Let me give you more. There's Liz Mayer, who is a Republican opposition researcher. She is not involved with Herschel Walker's campaign, but she does remember hearing people talking about how he paid for someone's abortion long ago, as far back as 2000, 2021. She says, quote, I remember hearing about this very early and thinking it was like a classic oppo hit. This abortion thing I heard. Having more kids than he was coping, uh, copping to, I heard. And all of this was before we got to the point of him being the Republican candidate. I had heard about the alleged liabilities and abortion was top of the list. So they knew, they knew, they didn't care, that they did not care. Okay, let that sink in. As they're celebrating the stripping of women's bodily autonomy by our Supreme Court, as they're pretending to be the righteous ones who are allegedly saving babies, they're also promoting and pushing for a man who paid for his ex-girlfriend's abortion to be the Republican candidate in the Senate race in Georgia. They knew, they didn't care because they don't care, they've never cared. Again, abortion is never, the debate around it is never really about abortion. It's all a game, it's all about power. And I really need people to understand that. Now, if you happen to be religious, if you happen to feel uncomfortable with abortion, you you think that a zygote or a fetus is the equivalent of an independent living, breathing human life, great, I disagree with you. I just do, I disagree with you. But you get to make decisions about your own body. Well, I mean, unless you're in a red state right now. In that case, you don't if you're a woman, let's just keep it real. But for religious folks who genuinely buy into this, 
you do get to make the decision to not have an abortion, to not take birth control, to live your life as a pious, in your mind, individual. But that shouldn't seep into policy and that shouldn't seep into the private lives of other individuals who might not believe in your religious doctrine. The idea of controlling other people's bodies based on the political schemes of these disgusting politicians who can't wait to get their D wet with their patients, not interested in that. That's what Republicans are, let's keep it real.